One simple question remains with so much to unpack. Can the Arizona Cardinals win with Michael Bidwell as the owner? You are locked on Cardinals. Your daily Arizona Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Done Cardinals, your team every day. Alex Clancy here on location in beautiful Northern California. Um, thank you for making Locked On Cardinals your first listen each and every day, free and available on all platforms. You can follow me on Twitter at Clancy's Corner. Follow the podcast at Locked On AZ Cards. Uh, yeah, you know, and check out the YouTube channel as well. Thanks for making Locked On Cardinals your first listen, free and available on all platforms and on YouTube. Uh, trying to get to 3,000 subscribers before the start of the 2023 NFL season. Tell your friends. We need more everydayers up in here. Never going to say that again. Uh, so mandatory minicabs happening. Players are running routes. Players are blocking. Players are catching punt return passes or, you know, kicks. And, like, mandatory minicab is mandatory minicab. People showing up is more of the storyline as pertains to the actual performance on the field. You'll get flashes of, oh, this rookie showed out today. And this, okay, great. And all of those things are good. Buda Baker's not there. There's really no worry from players about if Buda Baker's going to show up because that's what he does. Um, people are calling it a hold-in. I think that's dumb. Um, he wants a new contract. I don't think it's obvious. He already said that. He said he requested a trade. We know what it is. This isn't like a calculated move by Buda Baker that nobody knows about. He wants more money. The Cardinals need to give it to him or they're not going to have him on the roster maybe next season. But there's one thing that I wanted to hit on today. And I'm going to take the majority of the podcast to do it. And I'm going to kind of just answer a question that a lot of people have asked me, that I've had conversations with other people about, and that we've kind of brushed off because there's really no changing the actual situation itself unless anything, something else were to come to light. But can the Arizona Cardinals win with Michael Biddle as the owner? And there's so many different layers to this. I've talked a lot about how Monty Austin for down from the GM down in, you know, down to the players or, you know, with the players and not down to the, you know, but like from the Monty, from the GM level down where only thing above that, you know, president, owner, that part can the Cardinals win with a tent over them that you see in outside weddings when it starts to rain inside the organization of the Arizona Cardinals? Can that faction win with it, with Michael Bidwell so signing the checks? There's multiple layers. Will the players buy in? Are the is the coaching staff and GM uh, are they prepared to take on this endeavor with? Michael Bidwell still is the owner because what we've seen up until this point when he took over officially in 2019 after his father passed, you know, he's, he was president from 20, 2007 up until then is he kind of does what he wants and he thinks that what he does is the right thing, whether it be the move that he allows or keeping one of his best friends at GM probably for five years longer than he should be. He pays people too much money and then asks for restructuring. He doesn't pay people who paid their dues and should get paid. Like there is no rhyme or reason as to, and then on top of that, obviously the scathing review from the report card that the Cardinals were given as an organization by former players, you know, it's not a great look. So there's kind of a two tiered question here. I'm going to answer one way. Can the Cardinals win if Michael Bidwell doesn't change? Can you win with him as Michael Bidwell that we know him up until this point? And can Michael Bidwell change? I'm going to I'm going to only do one segment on that because I think you know, less is more with a conversation like that. So, let's talk through the end of last season. Michael Bidwell is kind of looked at as one of, you know, doesn't spend as much money. Obviously, he's not as wealthy as many of the owners in the NFL, many of the team leads in the NFL. 
But the lineage of Bidwell, of the Bidwell name, and this is not, you know, this is, I'm just looking at how this organization is run, play on the field, et cetera, has been looked at as not towards the top tier of stability, functionality, winning, et cetera. The Arizona Cardinals or the Cardinals organization as a whole is one of the, if I think they're in the bottom three of law or top three of losses in the history of, of football. Now you could say, well, they've been around longer than a lot. Sure. That's fine. But there are other teams that have been around that haven't lost as much as the Cardinals have. So what we're looking at up until this point is Michael Bidwell doesn't have a whole lot of history on his side pertaining to, you know, his performance, especially since 2019, you know, 2018, he was still here. He's been here since 2007, obviously in, in the president role. What's happened over the last handful of seasons. It's, even though they went, you know, seven and zero, ten and two, and then we know what happened last year. You could blame it on injuries potentially. Twenty twenty was a building year in Kyler Murray's second year. The big thing that I fault, I guess, or the big thing that I see as the anchor for Michael Bidwell's inability to kind of see what he's done in an effort to change it in the future to hopefully, you know, position the Cardinals to more success is he doesn't admit when something went wrong. And by admitting, I mean by actions. He doubles down. I am still shocked that he fired Cliff Kingsbury. I'm shocked that he fired Steve Kime. He doesn't do what the traditional owners do in an effort to position their team for success. Does he want the team to win? Of course. It's his team. It's been in his family for generations but Michael Bidwell, and I've said this a bunch, he op- he runs the Arizona Cardinals as if he's responsible for them winning 10 Super Bowls. It's like, you know, don't worry. Don't worry. Oh, it's rudimentary to you? That's fine. Look at the rings. Look at the trophies. Look at this trophy chest. We know what we're doing. You don't. Let us do our thing. He runs the organization like that with nothing to show for it. And that's the frustrating part for fans. It's like, he doesn't get it. He's so detached from reality at some times where it's like, how do you not see that this isn't working? And I speak in generalities because if we had to go down laundry list status, we'd be here until I was, you know, 60 years old. Having said all of that, can the Cardinals win with Michael Bidwell as owner? Yes. Of course. Absolutely. Because almost as impactful as his first couple years taking over as owner since his father passed. Ups, downs, ups, downs, just zero stability. What he's done since the end of the 2022 season has kind of brought in a breath of fresh air as to opening up, as I mentioned multiple times, every dayers will know this, opportunities for this organization. So before I touch on that, what Michael Bidwell can do in an effort to continue this slowly but sure move away from what he's done in years past as owner, I want to talk about if he doesn't change. Say this was Red herring for what we're what we're going to see for the future from Michael Bidwell, and he's going to revert back to his ways, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Where do Monty Osiford and Jonathan Gannon come into this? What if inside the arena that is State Farm Stadium, run by Michael Bidwell, is that tent where Monty Osiford, Jonathan Gannon, and, and the players reside? and grow and change the culture and change the infrastructure and foundation of this team under that massive umbrella, can it work if Michael Bidwell doesn't change what he's doing from his end? And that's the fascinating conversation. Are the Cardinals able to win games devoid of who the owner is? I'm going to unpack that next as we roll on here, Locked on Cardinals. I just think it's it's a fun topic to discuss because when it comes to things like this, sometimes the 
NFL owners are a little bit more absentee. They see it as a business and, you know, they're there, but, you know, it's just another entity that they've invested hundreds of millions of dollars in and are making hundreds of millions of dollars, you know, because of. Sometimes it's debilitating when the owner is so hands-on. And I'm not saying Michael Biddle was hands-on, like, or as, like, when he started watching film last year, when that report came out with Cliff Kingsbury, I'm like, what are we doing here? What do Jonathan Gannon and Monty Austin for have power wise, resolve wise, and flexibility wise pertaining to their job description on how they can take control of this, regardless of who the owner is? I'm going to hit that again as we mentioned next Locked on Cardinals. This episode of Locked on Cardinals is brought to you by FanDuel. Make your way to FanDuel right now because new customers can get a no-sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's $2,500 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. So, yeah, sure, NBA season's over. Congratulations to the Denver Nuggets. Football, months and months away. That's okay. FanDuel's got you covered. You know what is being played every day? Major League Baseball. And what Major League Baseball does is it ushers in this ability to do these single game, the same game parlays that, that FanDuel is, is champion. Like it is this incredible thing. You bet a little, you win a lot. Go to FanDuel.com. You can bet on NFL overs or, or NFL futures, whatever it is. They've got you covered. There's no better place to bet all of the baseball action, et cetera, than number one, America's number one sports. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and get a no sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. Locked on Cardinals, your team every day. Alex Clancy here. Please go like, subscribe, YouTube channel. Locked on Cardinals 3K. That's what we're searching for before the start of the 2023 season. Thank you, everydayers, for being here. If this is your first listen to Locked on Cardinals, thank you. Maybe make tomorrow your second. You know, I'm, you know, I'll talk more about voluntary minicamp. I, I, you know, I'm looking at this big picture. We talked about Isaiah Simmons yesterday. If you haven't checked that out, you know, please go check that out. Um, uh, practicing with the DBs. Talk about Buda Baker not being on the field during open practice, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm giving people Kevin Mac, yeah, Kevin McNamara, I think your name is. Uh, if, if I mess that up, you're getting a day off from Buda Baker. You are welcome. When it comes to the Cardinals as a whole, the fragile ecosystem, infrastructure building, culture shifting, foundation strengthening, words that I've used, terminology that I've used, that I'll continue to use pretty much for the next two to three seasons. Michael Bidwell being the omnipresent one around the organization has thwarted growth in the past okay and with this now with monty austin ford in with jonathan gannon in it's going to be it looks like it's going to be more of a cabinet approach with the with the coaching staff with jonathan gannon being the quote president as it were monty austin ford is all he all monty austin ford has done is check boxes since he's been here clear path clear roadmap not going out in free agency making big splashes signed kazir white excuse me from philly to bring in his to uh, coaching from his linebackers coach there, Nick Rallis, now DC of the Cardinals, Jonathan Gannon, his DC over in Philly. And, you know, adding little pieces here and there and then absolutely crushing the draft and positioning the Cardinals for success for the future, whether it be through draft capital, cap situation-wise, going into next season, DeAndre Hopkins walking like, Monty Osborne has a clear path. So at this point, it would almost be a fool's errand not to trust Monty Osborne, not because you don't have other options, but because it's, made clear very quickly that he is not the former GM of the Arizona Cardinals. This is a different level up that the Cardinals haven't experienced in a decade. Is it going to work? We don't know. Are the draft picks all going to be superstars? Probably not. Are they all going to be bust? Probably not. But if you tell me that you, you experienced that draft, this past draft, with less certainty or confidence in a GM, then any year that Steve Kime was drafting, 
I'd say, let's go back, review the tape. Now, sure, revisionist history is great because we all know what the outcomes were of all of the drafts that Steve Kimes, you know, took part in and, and obviously drafted for the Cardinals. But this draft was with intent. This draft was with a clear plan, even though it came down to the last two minutes with, you know, the uh, the video that popped out about the trade back being with two minutes left or three minutes left on the clock uh, with Houston. The question is, can Monty Allison for Jonathan Gannon at all coaching staff take the players on the roster and build and grow and evolve and mature and strengthen team wise in an effort to position themselves to win in the future, even though Michael Bidwell is still going to be the owner probably forever. And that answer is a resounding yes. Okay. This isn't Arthur blank on the sideline huffing, you know, looking like a pouty teenager after his team gave him a massive lead in the Super Bowl. This isn't Jerry Jones going on the local radio station every week and every day after after a game during the season. I think it's 105.3 The Fan in in, uh, in Dallas interviewing for 20 minutes. It's not that, okay? Michael Bidwell's not that front-facing. But he is the face of of losing more games than the Cardinals have won for a while now. And maybe that's not fair to him. Maybe, you know, Steve Kime just got, was given more power than he maybe should have. Whatever it may be, the stigma surrounding the Arizona Cardinals, unfortunately, and this isn't a direct attack of the person whatsoever. This is the avatar that is the owner of the Arizona Cardinals. Michael Bidwell, his name has never been correlated with winning. It's never been correlated with a fun atmosphere to play in. It's never been correlated with a place that free agents want to come play at or players who are drafted here want to stay and play here. It just isn't. And can that be changed? Sure, we'll hit that in the next segment. But Mike Monty Austin for it, what does it mean for Monty Osper and Jonathan Gannon, where do they come in? Where do the players come in? Business as usual. Just because Michael Bidwell has never done it before doesn't mean that he can't house a GM, head coach, and players who can really have sustained success together. And we are starting the witnessing process here from ground level. This is the true building being built, scaffolding still on the sides. The, the, the building isn't painted fully yet. There's no, you know, furniture or uh, insulation or anything inside the building yet. That's where we are now during mandatory minicamp, during Monty Osborne and Jonathan Gannon's first stint as GM and head coach, respectively. Kyler Murray coming off ACL. All of these uncertainties that are going to at some point need to be molded into a a team that can win more games than they lose in the future. Can that happen with Michael Bidwell as the owner? Yes. Does that mean that there are going to be hurdles that potentially need to be overcome pertaining to paying players as much as other organizations could pay players? Yes. Does that mean that the Cardinals can't win with that structure? No. Does it make it more difficult? Of course. But if what we've seen over the last couple months is now the rule and not the exception to the rule, meaning functional, rational thought and moves made for the better part of the organization and not to feed his own ego, we could be looking at a different Michael Bidwell and a different future of this organization. Is it far-fetched right now? Probably because we haven't seen it in action yet. All we can do right now is take the information that's been given to us, which is after the 2022 season, Steve Kime removed, Cliff Kingsbury removed, GM uh, head coach hired with that wide nest net cast it's, that Michael Bidwell said initially after firing Steve Kime and Cliff Kingsbury, Michael Bidwell has done everything that he said he was going to do up until this point. Can he change in the long run? Let's hit that next, Lockdown Cardinals. As we roll on here on a Wednesday edition, Lockdown Cardinals, your team every day. 
So, you know, the Michael Bidwell as a person just fascinates me. He just fascinates me. And he fascinates me because he seems to care. Like, when he gets into press conference, especially recently, there's more bravado, like not false bravado. There's more oomph to his voice and to his presence when talking to the media as of late. Okay, now what's being surrounded with his his uh, poor treatment of employees and players' families and everything you know that that came out not only in the in the uh, report card report but also you know stories afterwards there were rumblings of him his mistreatment of of employees over the years. We've seen a radical shift in how he does things since the end of the 2022 season. Small sample size, yes, but massively impactful if continued. So can he change? Can he really turn over a new leaf? Can he do things? Look at this. And it's not a direct correlative, okay? Because it's a different position. It's not an owner of a team. It's a general manager. Look at what Howie Roseman's done in Philly. Look at what he's done, okay? A couple years ago, we were talking about Carson Wentz and Doug Peterson getting in fights and them drafting Jalen Hurts and what the hell are they doing and this roster isn't right and, you know, all of these things. They won a Super Bowl, sure, with Nick Foles after Carson Wentz got hurt. Howie Rollsman goes in there and it's like, this dude should be fired. Like, what is this dude doing? And then one day, maybe he takes a magical pill, maybe he hibernates for a month and then comes out and he becomes the best GM in football. It was seemingly overnight. I mean, you check out Gino Camilleri and Louis DiBiase, too. My boys here, locked on Eagles. Um, but he seemingly changed overnight. So while he's not an owner, it gives proof of concept that if people want to, they will. And if Michael Bidwell wants to, he can a lot better than what a GM does because he has all the power. Power is loosely defined. He has... Final say so. He signs the checks, which is the ultimate bleep you if making a decision because he can do it or he does or he can do it if he wants. He doesn't have to if he wants. Now hiring Monty Austin for it, having him sit back. Michael Biddle was on his hands during that you know phone call with with Nick Casario, and then I think that uh, of Houston of the Texans, and then you know a couple others. I think he was on the phone with, with Chris Ballard. I can't remember. There was another phone call that he had during that little clip from. Um, uh, the, the Arizona Cardinals post and that Ari Mayroff posted also during draft night. Maybe him just sitting on his hands is what Michael Bidwell should be doing and now doing it with somebody who seems to be more capable than the last GM. If that's what it is, if that's his way of showing that he's changing, giddy up. Because what he did was he hired an unproven GM because he'd never been a GM before, an unproven head coach Obviously, we've never been a head coach before, an unproven offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator, because neither of those, neither of whom have ever played, have ever coached that position before. So what Michael Bidwell has shown is that he's willing to change, obviously, maybe potentially a couple of years too late, but if you're looking at the old Michael Bidwell and this Michael Bidwell, it's completely different. It, it just is. And maybe it's happenstance, circumstantial, coincidental, potentially because of, you know, the time frame and it being the last straw. But he's eating a lot of money that he's going to have to pay Steve Kime and Cliff Kingsbury. So he made, he could have validated, keep bringing them both back for another year. Because of the injury ravaged season, it was just a huge cluster. He could have, like, if somebody were to told me that I said this when it happened. If somebody told me that they're bringing him back for one more run with Kyler Murray out for half the year, I'd be like, okay. I mean, I get it. It's a terrible idea, but I can validate why because it is potentially going to be a throwaway season anyways. But then you look at the other side. Well, that means Steve Kime gets to draft a whole other draft class. And Cliff Kingsbury does whatever Cliff does, you know, when he's in the office, first in, last out, and still providing no sustainable results. So the fact that he ripped the Band-Aid off before the contract extension came in, making him ridiculed and look like a dummy for giving them contract extensions, he did it anyway, ripped the Band-Aid off, position yourself for success in a different way with a completely different trajectory, and on they go. 
So can he change? Is he willing to change? It seems like slowly but surely he's maturing as an owner. He's only been an owner by himself for this is going to be the fourth season to be the fifth season. I count with my fingers. I'm the right hand. And um, yeah. So, I mean, we'll see like I, Michael Bidwell fascinates me because if the Cardinals break through and win a Super Bowl in the next handful of years with him as owner, like everything changes. I go back to the Howie Roseman thing. It's like Howie Roseman was, he committed potential fire, many fireable offenses as GM, like as it pertains to his employment and look at what happened. Now they're one of the poster child poster children of the of the NFL pertaining to roster building, bringing in stars, veteran talent, and drafting properly. It's wild. Alex Nancy locked on Cardinals. There's your Michael Bidwell talk. I'll talk to you tomorrow.